1999 GMC 1500 Sierra. We had an oil leak. We took the transmission out. That's in the previous video. And I replaced the rear main seal and everything in this video. This is future Mike coming to you. Just letting you know, this is a disclaimer. Not a mechanic, not a professional. This is not a how-to. This is just how I did it. We're just jumping into it. Ah, oh, the rooster's ready. I hope you're ready. Got 290,000 miles on this truck. And the rear main seal up here was leaking pretty bad. So in this video, we're going to try to start getting everything put back together. That's going to be getting the rear main seal installed. We've got some universal joints. Replacing the universal joints. This is the front drive shaft, front axle connection. And then this is the rear drive shaft, rear axle connection. We had to take these off to get the transmission out anyway. So since they're out, we'll go ahead and replace these universals. We're going to start with that. Cap came off, that's handy, that's what I needed to do. And we'll drive her back in. The other way. We should just be able to get her pop out of there for us. There's the new universal. Even though where I ordered it from says it's the right one, we're just gonna, you know, do a quick check here, make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. So the one thing I'm noticing, see how these caps are smooth and this cap has a little indentation. So these caps are smooth on the old one. That's what went into there. That's what took that style retainer ring to hold it in. And then this cap that goes on the actual differential side of it on the old one, it's got that little groove in it and has that style ring, retainer ring in it, which it does come with those. So I just got to pay attention, make sure I'm putting the right, right cap in the right spot. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of start these on each side. Now I'm confident that there's a press that they make for this that would be the right way to do it. But you're confident and correct. No, we don't have that. We're just going slow, making sure everything lines up like it should as we go. Make sure there's not a bunch of those little bearings shooting out everywhere. Okay. So now we're pressed in that far, but we've got to get far enough to get the retainer ring in there. The small end of it like that. Line it up on there. Hey. Give her one more like that. Well, that worked pretty well. Clean out that little groove. New retainer clip. New retainer clips in. Make sure we're snapped all the way. Hear that satisfying click? I'm going to take the small side of the cap, set it right on there. A little further. There's all the bearings, little bearing pieces that fell out of the old cap. Need those in there. Uh, brake cleaner for that. Yeah, it worked perfect to get bearings out. Okay. Looks 
good there. Get that new retainer ring in. in so the rear universal is done I'm gonna save these clips for when we do the actual install so I can't quite figure this one out I see these clips here but there's no other clips on this this is the front drive shaft front axle but there are these little tabs right there and they appear to be plastic and I'm wondering if that's just a little keeper in there if you can drive through those, if you're supposed to heat those up, maybe. See that ring around there? It's kind of got that same material. It's kind of hard to focus on the GoPro, but there's that material there now that's cooled off. And that hole comes around. There's a ring inside there, too. So I'm guessing OEM, whenever they built it, they just pump something into that that fills that space and locks it in and it cures up and holds that in place. So we're going to try the same thing on this one, see if that works for us. I don't think that's the right U-joint. I don't think it should have that much play. Well. There you go, bud. See she's wiggling around in there and we don't. We don't want that. There's some kind of weird thing where two of them are different. No. No, they're all the same. They're all the equal amount of wrong. Well, let's go ahead and take that rear main cover off and get started on getting that replaced then. So this is what we're taking off. This cover here. You guys see okay? I don't know what the lighting's like under here. I'm sure it's fine. Hopefully I got the right size. 10 millimeters. That'd be a bummer. Get under here and not have the right size tool. Would not be the first time, would it? So we've got these all broke loose with a little 3 8 impact. Got this guy right here that was damaged. If you remember, there's a starter bolt that just kind of went for a whirlwind of a ride in here. And we got this fella here. I'm not 100% sure. Can I get you closer? I'm really hoping the thread holes there aren't gonna be screwed up, but I don't, they don't, that's what happened to it. So I wonder if it didn't start backing out. If that starter bolt didn't come around and whack it enough times that it kind of backed out and it came out far enough that it, bent it because it looks like where the actual thread was in it's still okay but we're we're fixing to find out real quick like She just slides off. No effort at all. Excuse me. So I talked to a buddy who is a tech and uh, has done several of these. He said surface prep's your best friend. That makes sense to me. He said the biggest thing to watch that you gotta watch where they always if they have them come back where they've had leaks is these corners not getting these corners cleaned out enough this is all gasket up here everything down here will be uh, silicone so 
you gotta really get those corners cleaned out. That's what he said anyway. This is the back side of the oil pan right here. Keep that in mind. So I got it all cleaned up. I think it looks pretty good. I think it'll work fine. The bottom part gets silicone. I'm gonna clean this just a little bit more, but I can see what he's talking about in these corners. If, uh, where's my little, down these corners where it goes metal to metal right there. If you got a bunch of gunk in there, it doesn't matter how much silicone you get caked in that corner. If there's any oil residue or anything like that down in there, eventually it'll work its way through. So I got those cleaned out really well. I got a little bit more to do on this one, but we're just about ready to put the new one on. So it came with this gasket and then this cover. And then it came with all new bolts here. With the exception of these. We'll have to reuse those old ones. It came with all new of these. Probably gotta make sure they actually thread in. That's a good thing. Let's see, that was the one that was messed up. Let's make sure that threads in okay. Looks like we're good there. Okay. This one also came with all the torque specs and the torque sequence. You gotta torque down certain ones first, so we've got that going for us. Uh, I've got a torque wrench. That's gonna come in handy. And all the across here. Yes, I'm using my impact as a flashlight. Okay, now everything's lined up then. Do my best to set that on there first. Like that. All right, I'm gonna have to move you guys. Well, I don't know when you guys turned off, but these are all ran in just snug, not torqued yet. And the oil pan housing bolts are ran in snug, not torqued yet. That's it. That's all it is. What it's doing is it's pulling it down into that rubber, rubber gasket material. There it is. Here we go. Rumor has it, that's right. Let's get that flex plate mounted up there next. Let's do that. Let's just, let me, let me just get under, okay. So you'll remember that I put these flex plate bolts here in to go to the torque converter. Just to make sure I wouldn't get up, mixed up which way the flex plate went. I did get new Flex plate to torque converter bolts because those got pretty tore up. But to the actual engine, we're going to reuse the same ones. So there are six flex plate bolts. Maybe I've got six somewhere. My bolt organization could have been better. Uh, first, we're just going to go through and get them all snug down. First pass, 15 foot-pounds. Uh, this is one here. Fifteen is pretty light. 
we're not going to get much of a satisfying click on that one. But next is 37. I keep calling it flywheel. You guys know flex plate on automatic, flywheel on manual. This is a flex plate, but I think everybody understands it. And the last pass, Valza 74. We're going to have to. Can I get that on this wrench? Yeah. There's one, two, three. Four, five, there we go. Well, rumor has it, flex plate, rumor has it the flex plate is torqued. Okay. I don't know, things are going pretty well. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna slide this torque converter out. Why is it thundering? Mm. Feels like I'd be prepared for it. Oh, I think that might be the heaviest part of the whole dang transmission. There's a seal right there. Oh, and actually, well, <laughs> that seal's leaking, but it's probably just fluid when we pulled that, uh, pulled it out. But since we got everything apart, it just makes sense. Oh my God. Were you there the whole time? It's like there's a little retainer clip right here. That maybe helps hold that seal in. All right, so here's the new one. Look at that, huh? Fancy. So it's got like a metal ring around the outside, and then here's the seal itself. This will be the outside. This uh, is the tripod for the magnetic stand, if you're wondering what that's for. Anyway. This looks like that whole metal ring comes out, so I just need to get something behind that metal ring and get her popped out. I present to you Indiana weather. It's beautiful and sunshiny now, and it's only been about two minutes, but uh, anyway. There we go. There's the old seal. Everything looks fine there. That's a good thing. Well, it is working really well. All right then, replace the shaft seal, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Actually, it wasn't too bad. I wanna give it a few more taps. Just that, that retainer ring, just really make sure. Okay. All right, so now we need to slide that torque converter back in there. We need to make sure it seats fully back, all the way on these splines, both sets, there's two sets of splines. Okay. There we go. Give her some wiggles and turns and really make sure she's pushed back on her. I think she's okay. Now I need to come up with a way to hold this torque converter in place. Real fancy solution here. This is called wood. We have it where we're at. I don't know if you guys do or not. There's just a screw on each side with the washer back here through, uh, through the bolt holes for the transmission where it goes onto the engine block. And it's got it in there. It's not like 
pulling it tight, but it's it's enough that's gonna keep it on those splines and keep it up in place without it falling out while we get this thing lifted in the air. And then when we get close to position, we'll back those screws off and move that block of wood. Hopefully that works out okay for us. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting everything slid up, rigged up, and set up for the lift. And I'll meet you guys when we're ready to go up in the air. All right, so we're making good progress here. Oh, let me get underneath here. We're up, we're at that stage there. We're sitting back on here. It went up uh, pretty decent, just kind of time consuming. Um, just use a jack to lift this end up. Used a, I don't know where it went, ratchet strap to hook onto here and pull this over, oh, it's right, right there. Pull that back over the cross member. Once this was up here, I just used a jack to uh, lift that up, kind of cribbed and jacked as we went, and now it's sitting across there. And this is built up, ready for the next stage. On the jack, by the way, you can rent transmission jacks. You can buy them at Harbor Freight. You can do all of those things, and I highly, highly would recommend that. But here we are. What I found was, I started kind of looking around a little bit closer, the gap at the top and the bottom were way different. So I went back to the video of when I took it out, and I noticed how much the back of the engine dropped whenever I pulled it out. So I figured maybe I need to lift the back of the engine up just a little bit. I did that, I did some wiggling from the back again, and it just went right on in there. We still got just a little bit more to try to get in there, but I think we're on the right track now. This is also a reminder to take the transfer case off when you did this. I didn't do it. I don't know why I didn't do it. I just thought it would be easier to leave everything attached. Because the transfer case is on, it's sitting back on that torsion bar back there. That means the back of the transmission is sitting up higher, which is probably another reason why these weren't mating up correctly. If the back, if the transfer case was off and I had an actual transmission jack, you know, we'd be able to come in at the right angle without having to mess with the engine. So I feel like this is on a time fuse. Let's get this. Well, would you look at her now, bud? Huh? She looks good. The other thing I was worried about, oh, where are you falling? Was that the torque converter maybe wasn't back far enough, but I turned it to where, I turned it to where I could see the attachment point by the flex plate. That way I knew exactly how much clearance I actually had. And you can see we're pretty good there. So the bolts on the very bottom are just like a regular bolt with a flange head on it. And then all the other ones, or like this, that's a 15, and then there's a 13 millimeter nut. They all have some sort of bracket on it, whether it's fuel lines or uh, the transmission dipstick or some wiring harnesses, that kind of thing. We'll get into that a little bit further as we go, but there are different ones. These two go on the very bottom. Right here. Where's the hole? There she is, bud. I don't know how to get you in the action up there. I wish I could. Come on, get on there. Come on now. Okay. Oh. So we've got the bolts all the way around, just kind of ran in with the impact with the 3 8 impact. So they're all snugged 
We'll get them torqued down tomorrow. It's like seven o'clock right now. Following morning, actually following afternoon, we have poured some concrete at Jason Works Lot place this morning. So that's pretty cool. But uh, we're gonna start torquing down the bolts around the transmission. What I found online says 34 foot pounds. So next we're gonna put new uh, flex plate bolts in. These are the ones, these go from the flex plate back to the torque converter. These are the ones that came out. I just went ahead and picked up some replacements for it. Make sure, should be good. And they've got the hex option on the inside uh, and this new style has the bolt pattern too. I just picked this up the other day. Thought it might come in handy at some point. Here you go. That's a size eight. And hopefully we can get that all in there to torque it down okay. If I can't, a regular socket's gonna be shorter than what that is, so we might just do a regular socket, but that's what we're looking at. So you can see the torque converter and the flex plate there. So I got them somewhat lined up whenever I was sliding things in, but you can see you can still manipulate the torque converter and you can still manipulate the flex plate. So they're still separate. We got three bolts put in there. That's the ones I just showed you. So we've got to get these lined up, but we line them up with this port over here so we can get the socket in there. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, how do we go tell? I don't know. That's you're asking. You're asking the right question. I don't know how we're gonna tell. So I've got that one right there. Started. Just hand tight. We're just gonna keep spinning it around. See if we can get all three uh, snugged up in there. Uh, the torque spec on this that I found was 46 foot-pounds, 45, 46 foot-pounds. So the next step is the oil cooler lines. There's two little clips. Just like this. And they clip in up there. You can put these in first and then push the lines in and they should lock in. Honestly, it'd probably be a lot easier if you put this in before you put the transmission back in. You know, that whole hindsight thing. So there's the two lines, that's what they're going into. I wish I had a way to get the camera up in there. Let me try something. I'm trying to look at the camera and the line at the same time here. But it snaps on the outside. There we go. So if they're both on, we should be able to push those cooler lines right on there. Ow! goes and then there's little caps that just kind of slide over that help keep that ring in place like that. so the two cooler lines are attached dipsticks on so if you look right up there 
There is a bell housing bolt up there, and there's a bracket that supports those, uh, see that fuel, fuel lines right there? Supports those fuel lines. And I can't get my hand up there, so we're just gonna have to take an extension and just be really careful. Hand start it with the extension, make sure we, we're not cross-threaded. And we should be able to run it in that way. Where'd my, how did I lose all the extensions? Oh, found them. So on this dipstick, you can see the bracket right there. It kind of gets hung up at the top of the transmission. So I just got a coat hanger to hook onto the bottom of the bracket so I can kind of steer it a little bit. And then just using a long extension coming in from the back side to get that one on there. So I got that slid back on. There's a bolt here and a bolt there that's going to secure that. And then we have the shift cable. You can see it's kind of got the rectangular shape, so it's definitely directional. And there's a little notch right on there, so it doesn't go all the way back. It just sits right like that. And then we'll get that tightened down. We'll go ahead and get these bolts in. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the exhaust next. If you remember, these broke off whenever we were taking it out. Not uncommon. They're just pressed in from this side. So we should be able to take a hammer with a few good wax and pop those out. Just put some new bolts in. There's one. There's two. I think you see, they're just pressed in. A few good wax. They popped right out. Let's go ahead and put the new bolts in this connection here. Can I just lay you guys there? Fancy tripod. I don't know if you guys can see. These bolts are the right size, fingers crossed. Perfect. What'd you do, Mike? Measure? No. Oh, I guessed. Okay. These are lock nuts, by the way. I don't know if you can tell. They're almost pinched like that. We got that all buttoned up. Uh, we've got to do the connections here for the downstream and uh, upstream cap converters. Or, I'm sorry, O2 sensors. This one's right here. There's a downstream O2 and an upstream O2 sensor. On the passenger side, the connections for the downstream and upstream, they're both on the outside of the frame rail. Well, we're going to get these nuts real quick. These are going to be 37. Talk about these up here, the three nuts that attach the uh, down pipe to the exhaust manifold. 37 foot pounds on those. Looks like they're all gonna be okay. Ow, that hurt. okay back there. I almost got you. <laughs> oh goodness. Sorry about that. Run this cross member real quick. We're in a good spot to do that. On the top side of the frame, there's just a big old hunk of steel. We'll make sure that's in place. Oh, 
So these cross member bolts are supposed to be 56 pounds. I went 60 because that's what I had in my head. Uh, I forgot to double check. But third 60 on this and uh, transmission mount on transmission 35. So that would be these two. These two right here are going to be 35 pounds. 35 pounds of pure joy. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. I'm mistaken. I told you wrong. 35 pounds is the bolt that actually attaches the mount to the transmission. The nuts from the transmission cross member up to that mount. These here. These are 38. These are 38. Okay. What else we got in here? Transmission to engine. I mean, that's really overrated. It is an AC Delco. It's nothing fancy. I got this whenever I, uh, whenever I redid the head gaskets on the Subaru. I bought this because it does degrees of rotation as well. And honestly, it's more than I've spent on a lot of my tools. So I don't use it very often. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put it back up because I can do the rest with my smaller wrench. I'm just, I don't like nice things because I'm afraid I'm going to break them. I'm not used to them, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, bud? I know a lot of people say you can't use the same torque value if you're using an extension. Well, not a lot of people. Some people argue that. But uh, everything I've read and everything I've seen, I've seen a few videos where they put it to the test. They've got a, they just basically have a, a nut that's on a machine that tells you how much torque you're putting in. And they'll put multiple extensions on, they'll put knuckles on. Uh, if it's just straight, as long as you're still perfectly straight in line, it doesn't affect it. The only time it's going to change is if you're offset, if you're using, uh, well, you guys know what a knuckle is. If you're using a, a knuckle, you're not going to get the same value. But if you're using an extension, your value is going to be the same. Some people will say, well, there's there's twist and flex in the extension and there's, there's slop at the connection. Yeah, there is. But you're taking that out as you torque it down. You know what I mean? So... And then we just have this rig that goes right here, which protects the uh, transfer case. We're just going to use a German metric, or a German torque spec on this one, okay? We're just going to run her in with the impact. She's going to be good and tight. Remember, always hand start your screws. Or bolts. That way you don't strip them out on accident. All right, so I lubed up the splines on both ends and made sure these splines are all cleaned out, looking good, looking great. I did label this one in the direction it needs to go. I don't even know where to put you anymore. That one actually fits like it's supposed to. Looks great. So the big thing we're down to is we're gonna have to redo that U-joint up on that front drive shaft because that's just, it's not the right one. It's not going in there the way it's supposed to go in there. So for the third time, we'll try to get the right U-joint for that. So while we have the front drive shaft off still, this is the oil cooler block off, 210 millimeters. This is pretty notorious for leaking as well. And it did have a little bit of a leak. It wasn't leaking as bad as you saw everything coming out of this rear main. This was pretty much a steady run, almost. But there was leaking a little bit. And since we've got good access, let's go ahead and swap that out. It's like a $3 gasket. Might as well do it while we're here. And we'll go ahead and change oil filter, because obviously we're going to put some new fluids in. Here's the new one. You can see it's slightly different as far as this goes. But I'll put the camera up in it. That's what's up there. There's two ports like that up there. So that will be fine. The main thing is that that's the same. There's the bolts. And there it is. We're going to clean this up. 
can't really tell if something's leaking if it's already covered in oil. There's the old gasket. Here's the, uh, so there's that all cleaned up. Looks a lot better. Quarter inch torque on this. 106 inch pounds is what I found on it. That's what we're gonna do. So there's what it looks like on that end. I'm gonna clean up that part of it as well and then we'll get her all torqued down. So I couldn't find my 3 8 to quarter adapter, but uh, I just put it back on this torque wrench. I did some digging on those forums, and they said uh, if you don't have a quarter inch torque wrench, just use this and run it at 9 foot pounds. So that's what we're going to do. That's the handy thing about this is a million people have done this, so there's lots of information. That's it right there. Okay. So we are down to the mystery U-joint. I think the mystery has been solved. Something happened with these caps right here. This is what I got originally, a 534G. And that's what I picked up again today. But I went down to the auto parts store that I went to, which is a good old mom and pop store. They take awesome care of me. They're great people. I said, can you pull another one off the shelf? I want to look at it. And we double checked some things in the book, making sure we we're putting the right specs in for the truck. And I took one look at this and realized that this was going to work perfect. And that the one I had was not what was supposed to be in this box. Let me get it swapped out or out of here and I'll show you the difference. So I got that one off. You can see the part numbers are the same. Everything matches up there. Excuse me, Bob. I'm trying to make videos here. But when you get down to the U-joint, 352F, 352F, MG, JO, MG, CO. I don't know what that difference means, but I can tell you the caps are different. See where that slot is for that retaining ring? That's further in, where it's supposed to be. This is the one that wasn't working. That ring wasn't far enough in. It couldn't seat inside the yoke like it needed to. I don't know what the difference means there, and I don't know why it was in that box, but this is what I need. <laughs> Got the new one on. Go ahead and put these retainer clips in. One, two, three. That's terrifying. And then I'll put that grease circ on there. I know a lot of people are wondering about the top bolt on the transmission, if I was able to get that back in. I couldn't get it started from the bottom side. Here's the broken piece off the transmission. Here's the washer. Here's the bolt. I could not get it started from the bottom side. I can see it from way behind the bell housing. It's right there. I can feel it right there. So the plan is to get this started from the top side and then crawl down below and get that on. Oh, I can even see, I can see it. The luxury. Oh my gosh, what is this, the Hilton? Oh, oh this is not, nope, nope. That's graceful. And we got this little bracket here that goes on top of the transmission. Little 13 millimeter nut right there. I couldn't get a socket or extensions to get on that, so I just put a 15 millimeter wrench on it and went until my elbow clicked, and that seemed fine. Let's see if we can get that on there. So those are secured back there in that harness. We gotta get this cover back on. I gotta put some transmission fluid in. And then uh, then we'll fire it up and see if she leaks. And if there's no major obvious leaks right off the bat, we'll go for a test drive, see how everything shifts. Let's see.
So there's nothing just shooting out all over the place, so we got that going. Let's go ahead, we'll just let her run for a minute. Go ahead and get the tire back on, get her down off the cribbing. All right, so I drove down to one of the river parks. I'm gonna drive down to another one on the highway. Speedo fixed itself. I read online that you just have to get up to half the speed of what the speedometer is and it'll level itself out. I got up to about 35 and it leveled itself out, so now it's where it's supposed to be. There's no crazy vibration. Everything feels good. Shifting really smoothly. I know we didn't do a lot of work with the, um, with the transmission itself as far as the gears and stuff go, but um, still, we did have it out and everything disconnected that kind of thing so I was a little bit worried about how it's gonna go back together but it seems to drive really smooth like I said no vibration from the back which would tell me that I got the drive shaft in wrong since if it wasn't balanced right it feels good everything feels really good for a 290,000 mile truck not bad the real test is to go see if it's leaking any oil anywhere and uh, we do need to go somewhere and just kind of real slow make sure it uh, rolls in and out of four-wheel drive like it's supposed to four high and four low we'll just listen for the clicks I don't really have anywhere to to go mud or anything like that to test it but we should be able to just hear it go hear it engage easy peasy feels fine feels good I'm happy with it there's 55 Feel that come out. So it feels like those are going in and in and out fine. Oh, it's hot. Hot. Exhaust. It's hot. Looks good though. I don't see anything coming out of it. Here's the plan. Here's the plan. We're gonna keep the truck long enough to get the Subaru fixed. You'll see on an upcoming video. I want to keep the Subaru. And there's a very good reason for it why I like that car over the truck. And we'll talk about that whenever we're working on the Subaru. But we're going to keep it long enough till we get the Subaru fixed. That'll give me, you know, I'll be able to put 100 miles, a couple hundred miles on it maybe in the meantime. And uh, if there's any major issues that are going to come up, hopefully they'll come up in that time frame. But I think it looks good. I think everything, everything looks good. I'm pretty excited about it. Like I said, just take the dang transfer case off. Man, that would have saved me a lot of trouble. A transmission jack, yeah, probably would have helped, but I don't think it's necessary. And uh, an extra set of hands and a shop and a concrete floor and a lift and power tools. I think that's it. Would make it a lot easier too. But the biggest thing is take that transfer case off. Of course, you gotta get another gasket, but it would have been worth buying the gasket. They're not that expensive. I'm done. I'm done for today. No, I'm not. I got to move the truck and back the Subaru in and uh, start on that. So I'll see you guys maybe Sunday. Depends how much work I get done on that. I don't know if I'll have a video for Sunday or not. It's just been hectic, bud. Yeah, but I'm glad you guys found some time to be here. I really do. Oh, man. Appreciate it. I got to get these Crocs into four-wheel drive.